running multiple tasks in LabVIEW. Let's build a program that will have your robot drive and move the servos at the same time. I'm going to use my drive sub VIs. I drag my sub VIs from my desktop, that's where I had them saved. Feel free to use copy and paste as well, which are command C and command V. Just like other programs, we need to give information to our blocks, so I'm going to create some constants telling my motor drive block which motors to drive. Also how long to run the motors for. And finally, what power that I want the motors to run at. My second block is going to be driving the same motors, so I'm going to connect it to that same information. I want them to drive for the same amount of time, so I'm also going to connect to 5 seconds. Let's try something new. I want my first block to drive me forward and the second block to drive me backwards. So I'm going to use the negate block from the numeric palette. The negate block will multiply a number by negative 1. So the first block will get a 20, the second block will be multiplied by negative 1 so that it will have a power that's negative, so it'll go backwards. Let's have them run for one second apiece and have a power of 50 in the first block, negative 50 in the second block. Let's say that I want these blocks to run over and over again. I need to use a while loop, which is under NXT Programming Structures. When you have selected it, you can drag the while loop around the code that you want to have happen many times. So now you can see that I have a while loop around my code. All right, so we have the code to move the motors. Let's see if we can add some code to move the servo motors at the same time. So let's choose a couple blocks, a move servo block and a wait block. And I'm just going to copy and paste it so that I can have two more blocks that are exactly the same. My goal is to have a servo motor move between two positions back and forth. So I need to control click to create constants to give the needed information to the servo blocks. First I'm creating the servo identification number that I'm giving to both servo blocks. And now I need to give information for what position to move to. So let's say I have the first servo move to position 250. You can put any numbers from 0 to 255 in your servo. And let's have the second one move to 200. I don't think you need to, but you can create constants to make sure that your servos are enabled. And then let's make sure that our blocks run in the right order by connecting the pink NXT wires. Let's have the robot wait maybe one second in between each turning of the servo motor. Now 
Just like the DC motors, I want my servo motors to run many times, so I'm going to choose a while loop and drag it around my servo code so that they will run many times as well. As you can see, we still have a broken gray arrow, so our program is not done. We need to tell our loops how many times to run. One way to do this is to use the I block in your while loop. I stands for iteration, which means it is counting the number of times your loop has gone. So let's say we want to stop after the loop has run five times. Go to the comparison palette and get an equal sign. And then we will wire the I to the equal sign. And maybe let's say we want to run it five times. We create a constant to wire into the second part. So when I is equal to five, wire the equal sign to the stop sign. Do that for both loops. So both loops will run five times at the same time. To be honest, most programmers would not use an equal sign. They would use a less than or a greater than sign. Uh, those are usually safer for your programs. Don't forget to save your work so that you can check it and use it later on. Then let's try this program out by downloading it using the white down arrow, also called deploy. As you can see, the robot drives and moves its servo motors, but it will actually go six times because the I block starts counting at zero.